You watch talk shows, you've been seeing them for a long time, how they come together, you probably don't know much about that, do you? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome aboard. Happy New Year. I'm saying that all week. I think it's still, I think after the weekend, it's probably, you can just start treating people miserably again, if you'd like to, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Welcome in on the Friday show. You know, if you've been watching the show for any length of time, that I love the Friday show. Because I don't pop off on any issues. I don't opine on much. I get a chance to talk with people who are just interesting. And it might be you. And if you have a thought this year that you'd like to get on this show because you think you're interesting or you have a point of view that we need to know about and or you want to create a debate that people would be interested in, you just let us know here at Fox Providence. You could get a hold of us and our esteemed producer, Lexi Chris, will jump all over that. In the meantime, uh, Tonight, I'm really excited because I've got um, someone who I've known in the industry and consider uh, a friend here on the broadcast. And I'm actually very honored to have her because she's associated with another guy that I have to think very fondly of. And I'll explain that to you in a minute or two. Uh, but she wrote a book. And you know, I'm not big on the authors coming in here and talking about their books, unless the book is good or I'm interested in reading it. Full disclosure, I've skimmed. I haven't read it yet. Sorry, I ruined that. But here's the book, and it's called Yappy Days, and I'm sure we have another thing of it. See, we're a professional operation here, even though I'm under a lot of pressure because Bernadette has produced some of the best in broadcast in her career. And if you're interested in understanding some of the, you know, everyone wants to know, what are they really like, you know? you would be able to offer some stories on that. Happy New Year, my friend. It's great to have you. And thank you for inviting me. Congratulations on the book. How long did it take to write? It took about two years. Really? And then I brought in a couple of editors, and I have a very smart husband. Yes, who, you do. Who's also an excellent editor. And, um, and then we got it out. People should read this book, why? Because if you think you know TV or radio talk shows, the personalities behind the scenes, uh, th I kind of blow a couple of secrets. And um, also there's a lot of details and there's a lot of funny stories. And guys like you know, you have a guest in and suddenly they want to step out and just walk out and ruin the whole show. What happens then? Mm. What happens when the computers go down? Mm. That's the stuff. There's a whole other talk show going on behind the scenes. Right. I love the behind the scenes. Your experience, by the way, uh, uh, Bernadette's husband is Michael Harrison, who is the who uh, is the publisher of the Bible of Talk Radio in in this country, known as Talkers Magazine. But it's really more than that. It's Talkers. It's a Talkers industry that he has built, and he's single-handedly responsible uh, for, in some way, building a community of, of broadcasters. Uh, something that. I think is incredibly uh, difficult to do. Um, so you've been uh, associated with the industry and then met Michael and got hooked up and all that. And I don't know how much you want to talk about that, but I'm sure that your lives are just full of this industry and something had to come out in a book. Well, clearly, uh, sometimes our mornings over coffee are just like a talk show, but the, the hopscotching I did through a lot of the giants of our business, a lot of the talk show hosts, that's where all the stories were. And what you do and what these guys do is you tell stories. But guys like me, the, the producers, there's a whole other bunch of stories going on behind the scenes that I always felt like listeners and viewers would love to know. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's when you have to think on your feet, that's where you know, that's where the story is. All right, we're not going to get into the, the specific stories in this segment, but um, do some name dropping so that people stick around for this conversation. Clearly. Um, uh, Sally Jesse Raphael, Larry King, Lou Dobbs, Tom Snyder. I even got to work with uh, Charlie Osgood. Sometimes I was filling in on Charlie's show. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of giants, a lot of lessons, a lot of people who knew how to take a big story and bring it right down to sound bites. Mm. Okay. How's that for name dropping? So uh, we'll get into some of those anecdotes as we go. The role of a person behind the scenes on a show like this is so incredibly crucial. I mean, I got a terrific producer right now. I've had some not so good ones. 
my disposition, even for my little world, is highly dependent on the competency of the person who's putting the show together. It's everything, isn't it? It sure is. Basically, the producer facilitates the show, but we were born with an extra sense, maybe an extra two senses, a sixth and seventh sense. We have to be able to read you guys, even the pulse in your neck, because we have to be able to see that either you're in trouble, you're sailing along fine, or think through, okay, he's going to need a little help in A, B, or C. So we're facilitating, facilitating the show, booking the guests. Sometimes as a radio producer, I was engineering the show or screening calls as well. Well, the, the word producer, I think, confuses everybody because it has a different connotation depending on what platform you're talking about. Movie producers, executive, well, you know, you, you look at the credits at the end of a, of a, of a movie and, and, or even a, a television show, it's hard to figure out what it is they do. Um, do you want to give a little bit of a definition of what a producer does in each of those platforms so that people understand more what your role is? Well, I know I could speak to radio producers right. um, and we track down guests and screen calls. Um, movie producers tend to be more about the money. Uh, TV producers tend to be more about the money or line producing, making sure there's a consistency of um, the detail. But each talent has a different need. So even in radio, each talent, their, their producer is going to have a different uh, expertise depending on what the needs of the host is. Mm. So it, th throughout your, th some of the stories you're going to tell us, is most of your experience with the radio? Most of my experience is radio. But I worked a lot with uh, talent who were both on television and radio. So there was a lot of flowing back and forth. I, I had to work pretty closely with the TV people, with, with Tom mm. Snyder. Right. Did you like the talent? I loved the talent. And sometimes I hated the talent. But I loved what I did. And I, I took tremendous pride in um, making them look great, even when I disagreed. Because we all know, all of us producers know, even when you guys are wrong, you're right. You're right, even when you're wrong. Did I do that right? <laughs> I'm a talk show producer. I know how to talk to talent. What's the key? Keep you guys happy. How? Uh, I learn it along the way. And sometimes I make mistakes, and I just figure it out. I, I'm a middle child. I'm not, I have to see my way through a situation. And um, see how you're smiling? I, I keep uh, my host happy. It's that sixth and seventh sense. Lexi knows. You don't have to like them or agree with them. Correct. And there have been plenty. Sometimes I took a job because it was a great job. I did not like the host. But um, then there's a point where sometimes I, you know, you feel like, oh, this is not, uh, I'm, I'm fighting too much internally. That's a whole other story. But I, I know how to get a job done, and I also love taking big topics and making them understandable to someone like my immigrant mother who came to the United States and she was still trying to figure out, how, do you, how are you American beyond passing the naturalization test? That's, that's, that was my beginning point. That's what inspired me first time out. Guy says to me uh, the other day, um, talking about some of the stuff that goes on in talk radio here in Rhode Island. And he says, uh, he says, well, the truth is, is that you guys just make it all up anyway. You don't believe half of what you say. In fact, you don't believe anything that you say. And I said, well, you know, I can tell you that there's nothing I've ever said on radio or television that I didn't believe. There's nothing I've ever made up. But I can't say that my philosophy, I'm not going to talk about you know, mm. my ethics, but my philosophy is not necessarily um, others' philosophy. Thought on trusting what is said, hosts, TV, radio, some of whom who think they have all the answers on the world, should they be believed? As a listener, as, as a... As somebody who has seen it happen, 
who's watched the normal everyday life of mm -hmm. major league broadcasters, mm -hmm. and then they do their work. Did you work with talent that was just slinging it, didn't buy a line of their baloney? Certainly, I worked with talent who were slinging it. I think what it comes down to for me is authenticity. I believe that you believe what you are saying. So, as a viewer and listener, I am attached to your filter on the world. You're showing me your view of the world through your eyes. And Can you fake authenticity? I think I could hear it if I'm a viewer or a listener. What about as a producer when you're working with somebody who you know is yanking everybody's chain? I had a talent, should I name names? Yes. Lou Dobbs, who, when he got hired to do a radio show, requested a script writer for radio. And I'm for radio? Script writer? We were all terrified of him and at that point said, well, I'm not talking to him about that. And the problem is if you hear someone talking, reading their way through a script on radio, radio is so intimate. That is um, inside your head. If you're listening to earbuds, radio, you listen to audio presentation, it's a whole different story than visual presentation. Mm -hmm. And audio uh, is far more intimate. I can hear in authenticity, and I think most listeners can too. Hmm. Okay. Well, since we started talking about people, let's talk about some more when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> the name of the book is Yappy Days, and of course, uh, you can get it just about everywhere. Everywhere on Amazon.com, you can get it. Everything is Amazon. <laughs> Amazon is everything. <laughs> well put. <laughs> I don't know what that says about our economy, but that's a whole other conversation, no doubt. Uh, Bernadette Duncan on the book, Bernadette Harrison in real life. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, happy with the product? I love having collected the stories about all these behind the scenes. Uh, Anecdotes uh, most people would be shocked to hear about. Okay, give me a shocker. Uh, my dealing with uh, producers, trying to convince them not to talk to Laura Schlesinger as a guest about nude gate, which was that whole incident where her um, nude photos were online. And Does everybody remember Dr. Laura Schlesinger? I mean, she was she probably, I don't know how long the run was, was it 10 years, 15, 12 years, being the number one radio psychologist, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of blew by Dr. Joy Brown, who mm -hmm. we just lost in the, in, yeah. I mean, lost in life in the industry. Yeah. Joy had a very soothing, um, Big sister. Oh, yeah. Big you sister know, type. Uh, hell, I, I told her that, mm. uh, I told Joy on a number of occasions that uh, half my marriage was... <laughs> Was 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 judged by whether jo what would Joy say? I'm not kidding. I mean, um, she got a big kick out of that. When my wife got a chance to meet Joy, it was like it was like me meeting the Pope. Um, but she, I just I bring her up because you bring Dr. Laura up. Yeah. Dr. Laura was kind of like, what kind of an idiot are you? What are you? Yeah, you, you, you know. And it, it 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 was hardcore. So I remember she got jammed up and explained to everybody what the controversy was. She had been dating a, a, a man, a married man, um, and uh, Dr. Laura apparently had, had, um, had her picture taken naked. And after they broke up, he decided he was going to post those photographs online. It was pre her career, though, was it not? No. Oh, it was during? Yes. While she was, while she was, was opining and value oh, judging yes. uh, everybody who dialed on the phone yes. line, she was having her own little oh. situation. Oh. And you were trying to prevent what from happening? So I'm on the phone with producers and saying, okay, I got to protect this guest. She was my guest, and I'm working with other producers. I worked You're in the shadow. You're a guest in what, in what form? Explain. For, for it's a satellite tour. So basically, I'm a shadow producer working with other producers. On her providing, behalf? On provide, behalf? Yes, because she had just had a book out. Okay. So I'm, I'm facilitating her. So She's you're kind a, of a yes. PR producer type. You could call it okay. that. But you're not producing a radio show. No, I'm producing the 10 minute segments. And I got Dr. Laura in studio and I'm each, each on 10 minutes. On the controversy? Minutes. No, it was on her book. But these are, these are, oh. these are. Uh, and you're trying to convince guys like me not to ask her questions about that? 
You see what I mean? I know. I know. You, you guys can detect the blood, and you go after her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was. Were she you was, successful? No. You know, now, and <laughs> I'm telling not. you. <laughs> Is and I'm telling you, this is what I'm talking about, the, the, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah. Because these guys went crazy on her, and she's blaming me, and she has no idea what's going on. Well, the first time she can blame you. At the second, third, and fifth time, I think she probably figured out that the story is bigger than you being able to yes, prevent it from course. being addressed. Of course, and, and this is why I, I stayed away from her for years. Was she incorrigible? Very, very. She was very difficult. Very difficult. I mean, it, it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going through. You look through. like you need therapy right now. <laughs> Yeah, T tell me, I'm in recovery. Really? I'm in recovery from some of these shows. Was she the toughest one? Uh, she was one of many, and I knew Who that. Who else is this tough? Uh, I've had uh, guests walk out. Geraldo, Geraldo, day one of the Lou Dobbs show, Geraldo wanted to take on my boss, Lou Dobbs. Geraldo had been talking about immigration issues and arguing with Lou Dobbs but never in the same room. So the first day, the first hour, the first show of the Lou Dobbs show, we have, we have Geraldo come in and he comes in with his six foot tall, seven foot tall cameraman into my radio studio and I'm protecting six foot four Lou Dobbs and, uh, from Geraldo because he's going to make a scene. You see, he's good. He knows how to handle media. He's a media guy and I'm thinking, but not on my show. It was like I had to talk him down. I had to roll him over, and we ended up signing an agreement on a Dunkin' Donuts napkin because that was the only thing in the studio. He's a he's a an attorney. You might know that, and he agreed. Okay, cameraman will stay out as long as he gets to uh, have one on one, and as long as we didn't bring our cameraman into the radio studio. Oh, the things you have to do as a, as a producer. Who else was tough? Um, Larry King. Larry King was tough. Um, Larry King was tough. I had gotten to work with him. He built this business. He built the talk radio business. He was an icon. He was an icon. He, I had gotten to work with him between wife number five and wife number six. And let me tell you something. Between wives, there was a lot of uh, challenges. He was coming into New York because he had been writing books. Hold on, this is too good. We got to pause because I, I, I don't want to have to break this up. I always think Larry, Larry King is, is a, it was a king in this business. I also thought he was a creep. Um, I mean, you're, you're at, at some levels. I mean, how much age disparity is, is allowable between a guy marrying a girl? Uh, everyone defines it their own way. About 40 years, I think, is a little bit too much. You know, making babies when you're, what, 70 years old or something like that? Yeah. I'm not so um. sure that's right. But anyway, this is about my guest. I'll be right back. Well, let's do it. Listen, the book is Yappy Days. Find it on Amazon and uh, just buy it and enjoy it. And, I, you know, when I have uh, 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 two hours, I'm just going to rip it out. Uh, and it's on, my, it's on my list. And it, it feels like a two-hour read. It, it's... Right, two, three hours at the most. It looks like an easy, easy read. I love the way it's actually formatted uh, because there's concepts and then anecdotes that go around with the concepts, right? That's correct. That's I mean, how it's look, look it. you've, you've helped broadcasters, talk show hosts, uh, talk to people in, a, in, a, in an understandable way. The edit reflects making it sophisticated enough to impress, but user-friendly enough to digest, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot yeah. of, uh, a little bit of theory, a lot of story. It's heavy on egos, because remember, we're talking about big egos here and what fuels these folks. Okay, so finish the Larry King story, because everyone was hanging on that. So, Larry King. So, I'm a new producer, basically. I'm a fill-in, New York-based producer. Larry's show is normally out of Washington, D.C., and... Um, now he's in Poughkeepsie, the hello. <laughs> right? he, he oh, was, you do that well. And he was awesome. I mean, I, 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 listen, as a professional, I thought he was, he, was, he was everything. Talk about authentic. He's like a regular guy. And in light of that, he never said about himself that he was an expert or that he even read the book. Terrific interviewer. You know? But he would come in and visit us during the top of the hour news. He, he treated us like we were regular people, which was very unusual for talent. 
And um, hmm. so I'm working with him about two years now. Uh, again, this is he's in between wife five and six, and now he's on wife, um, I think, eight. I don't know. Uh, bottom line is, you know, it gets a little, a little funny for him, frisk, whatever. He comes into the control room where I am, top of the hour, and as usual, I'm all ready to hand him the rundown sheet, and I lean up to give him that, and he leans in to give me something else. He, he actually slams a kiss on me. I was so shocked. You know, I had been working with him for two years. On the cheek or years. on the lips? No, right smack on the lips. Yo. Oh, you got that right. A little cocktail thing going on maybe or something? No, no. no. I don't think he was that, no. that kind of guy. All right. You know, we're talking about late nights what? here. Yeah, it was a little shocking. And again, like I'm 28, 29 years old and he's in his 50s. It was not... It was such a shock, but I, I gave him the evil eye. He went back into the, the studio, and you know what? We never said anything like about it again. He just went in, and it was, it was as if it never happened, which is a whole other thing. Remember, now this is 1989. Yeah, I mean, you, just, Hill. you just created a whole 10 new shows on, no, really, the conversation is really interesting because, I mean, I, I could never even imagine that behavior. I don't even know how it comes from somebody, but... Um, there's a lot of the way it used to be is in all sorts of interpersonal behavior and all sorts of categories and sexual harassment is probably one of them I mean in this mm. day and age that would be a sexual harassment trigger bang I don't know if it causes somebody to be terminated right away but it's the kind of thing that you're trained now as an employee not to ignore uh, you have to tell somebody to tell somebody the fact that you just kind of sucked it up yeah, it's a, it, you know, it, it goes, it He never speaks. apologized, never said oh, a word, no. he never said a word. Oh, no, and, and that what wasn't was the part of the like culture. What was the tension like for a couple, three weeks at least of, mm. Oh, I would say um, wow. at least, yeah, it was totally awkward, totally awkward. Well, there's all sorts of stories. Uh, Sally Jesse Raphael is another pioneer in the business. You're going to have to read the book to learn more about that. But this notion of ego is interesting. You know, I, uh, I, I often tell people that this is one of the strangest ways in the world to, to make a living. Um, and, I, and I reflect on it all the time because I'm never really actually comfortable with it. You know, my dad made machines. He made widgets. He made things. We are the widgets. And being the widget is weird, hard. But you keep it fresh that way. But just the point is when, you're, when, when, when you make a living yapping, it's an interesting thing, and having somebody who can make that work for you, a producer, means all the difference between a happy day or a yappy day, mm. or a not so yappy day, right? Yeah, yeah uh, It's no important doubt. work. Um, we should talk more, uh, with, and you know what, uh, well we already have on the radio, because we're all discombobulated, Brandette was on with me on the radio, but I promise you when we talk about the radio, we'll talk about whether there's any good talent anymore out there do the kind of work that you do because my guess is it's fleeting yes I can't speak to that I, I think that there are a lot of young people out there who are obsessed with pop culture yeah too many Millennials though I'm lucky I got a good one <laughs> yappy days by the book thanks for coming thank you for having me be right back okay so you'll buy the book and um, You'll buy the book. I'm out of time anyway. It's Friday night. Have a great uh, weekend. Happy New Year. Go Giants. Giants, Patriots. It's going to happen again. Your biggest fear. Goodbye. <laughs>